Today I'm happy to discuss with my colleague Robbie Baines, who is our observability advisor in the Nordics at Splunk. So uh, about how we bring IT ops and engineering teams together in order to deliver exceptional customer experience for a more resilient business operations. Um, welcome, Robbie. Thank you. So first I would like to ask you, why do you believe that Splunk is growing fast within the observability market? Um, so companies have shifted their focus towards cloud and cloud services, and particularly uh, microservices architecture. Um, and this means that it becomes more complex to monitor these new different ways of building applications. Um, and uh, in order to do that, you need to have observability in place. So uh, why is it so important with the microservices architecture and cloud now? Um, so companies want to expand on their core business, and that is not maintaining their own IT infrastructure or having, you know, being responsible for their own data centers. Instead, they want to be able to develop new functionalities quickly and efficiently, and they want to be innovative as well. So that's what the cloud services can give companies today so that they can create a better customer experience. So can you describe uh, what enterprises and organizations are trying to solve? So with this new way of building applications and moving to the cloud, it becomes a lot harder than to have a good view and understanding of how your critical applications are behaving. Um, so um, you have multiple different dependencies between different product teams that are building solutions still on-prem, but maybe also then in the cloud or even multi-cloud. Um, and that makes it a lot more complex and you need to, you know, the, the traditional monitoring that you had before is not good enough these days. Um, so uh, you need to have a full stack end-to-end -end monitoring in place to get that complete uh, application visibility and your application landscape to see how things are, you know, if things are available or not. Okay, so can you give a concrete example? Um, so if you take a web shop, for example, uh, you have multiple product teams that are uh, developing their own services that are making this web shop work as intended, right? Um, and everything needs to work, uh, you know, across the board end to end for this web shop to work and for the uh, customer journey to be top class. Um, and um, they might also then have built things on cloud, of course, but they might have multi-cloud solutions and even a third-party vendor. So it's hard to stitch everything together and get a complete view of how your web shop is, is behaving. So observability comes in place then to, to give that, that view and to be able to solve incidents quickly and efficiently and also find root causes uh, more, more quickly as well. Okay, so uh, can you elaborate on the benefits of um, observability practices? Um, so you get this complete view, of course, then the, the, the full stack and then view of your uh, landscape. Um, and with observability, there is this, um, the three pillars of observability, which is metrics, traces, and logs. So with metrics, you see that something is happening. With traces, you see where it's happening. And with logs, you get an understanding of why it's happening. So when you combine all of these different capabilities into one tool, you can easily more troubleshoot and um, uh, you know, understand where there might be potential issues. Um, there is also the possibility to you know, maybe predict or see where something might happen before it actually happens as well. So, okay, but why should you choose Splunk for observability? That's what we would like to talk yeah. about, right? <laughs> so uh, Splunk is built for enterprise at scale. Uh, you can bring in vast amount of data in real time. Uh, Splunk also uh, uh, has no sampling functionality uh, and one second resolution as well. So no sampling means that we don't sample uh, any data that you push in. So all data that your services generate gets sent into the platform. And then one second resolution means that you can see this data stream on a second level instead of maybe 10 seconds or two minutes or five minutes. Uh, and that's increasingly uh, more important, of course, with the microservices architecture that um, you see it on a one second resolution because everything is happening in mere seconds in, a, for instance, a Kubernetes um, uh, container application. So can you give a concrete, you mentioned no sampling, can you give a concrete example of no sampling? 
Yeah, so we had a customer um, who were using a, a, a different monitoring tool and they had quite a lot of data that was being pushed into it, but it was sampling. And they had an issue with the platform or their services because um, you know various customers have complained or they got a lot of incidents, but they couldn't really see and detect where is the issue happening. So when they moved to Splunk Observability uh, with the no sampling functionality, they immediately saw where the errors were happening and then could quickly and efficiently you know, uh, solve that uh, problem. Great. So, okay, what should you think about when implementing observability? What is the most important thing? Yeah, so th the most important thing is that you need to have a common data platform. Okay. Um, you need to have your traces, your metrics, and your logs within one platform in order to utilize these capabilities to troubleshoot and efficiently see where things might happen or the availability of your applications. Um, and a lot of companies have uh, monitoring solutions spread across the organization, right? And that's how you build a silo-based organization where you cannot correlate all of this data in a good way. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. So could you clarify, uh, elaborate more about that? Yeah. So imagine if you have metrics, traces, uh, and logs, and then you might even use um, our capability called synthetic monitoring or RUM, which is real user monitoring. If you take all of these, uh, uh, all of this data, um, you can correlate it into views, so you get a complete end-to-end -end, uh, understanding of all of your application services, full stack. Mm -hmm. um, which then means that you can follow your, you know, if you have a web shop, for example, you can follow your customer's journey end-to-end. -end. You know, they're logging in, they're searching for products, they're adding products to, to the cart, they're going to checkout, and they're going to the payment service. Uh, if you don't have an observability in place, it, you know, and you have issues, it becomes a, you create, a, a, you know, a bad user experience. Um, so, um, if you have all of this in place, then then you can follow up the entire journey of your customer and where they are having issues. Uh, they can might might have, you know, some 20% of your users or customers are having issues, and there might be intermittent problems. And if you don't have observability in place, it becomes hard to detect that and solve problems quickly. And, um, create a, a good customer journey. Okay, thank you for that. So anything else we're coming to the end to end with that you would like to add? Uh, no, just uh, you know, go to Splunk.com and sign up for a free trial of Splunk Observability. Great, so let's end with that. Uh, thank you, Robbie, for your time today. Thank you. And to all of you, thank you.